Hey guys, Coach MJ here with what to wear for your first triathlon. So first I wanted to say thank you guys so much for hopping in. I haven't done a video like this in almost a year. I was doing it for a couple years. I took a break over the summer uh, and then I just kind of never went back to it. But uh, with the uh, growth of this group right here, the triathlon training tips and trips, tri t tips and tricks group, uh, I noticed that there are a lot of you who you're doing your first one and you don't know what to wear and you're looking for tips and you're looking for advice and whatever. Um, anyway, I wanted to get on to let you know it's not that tough and answer any questions that the rest of you have. I'm going to try and come in to this group once a week to answer any questions that you have, uh, give you tips, chat, whatever. So, um, you got to bear with me because the sun, I'm not used to, I'm not used to the sun here in Chicago. So the sun's kind of distracting me just a little bit, but anyway, I wanted to get right into it and you don't need to break the bank to get ready for your first triathlon. Okay. So here's what I have listed. We're going to go through it. What you need guys, this is a little bit easier for you. Oh, let me jump back. My name is Coach MJ. I'm MJ Gasek. I'm a USAT certified coach, a Ironman U certified coach, USMS level four, ASCA level two, USATF. Anyway, I have a lot of certifications. I've been coaching triathletes for over 10 years now and competed in triathlon for over 12 years myself. So now I full-time coach. I'm not really competing anymore, but I still know a lot of things to help you guys. So that's my background. Um, what do you got to wear? Again, first thing, you need a swimsuit. Okay, I will tell you guys, so when I started triathlon, I had no friends in triathlon. I have some now. I had no friends. I didn't know what to wear. In fact, the only person I was training with was a male, and I couldn't ask him what kind of bra do I wear to do my race. So... I just winged it and I will tell you, I'm gonna show you what I wore my first, my first race. I wore a regular old swimsuit like this, okay? And I just, all I did was wear a sports bra underneath, okay? And that's how I swam. Um, when I got out of the water, I put on just a regular, well, it was, it was sort of a bike jersey, but more of a cute bike jersey, it wasn't very functional. Just something so I could cover the, the suit. And then I pulled on a pair of running shorts and I did the whole race like that. Now, you can totally do that and just wear what you have. If you're training for a triathlon, you have a suit, you have a sports bra, you have shorts, you have a shirt, just do that, okay? Now, if you wanna spend a little bit of money, you can get tri shorts. Okay, so tri shorts, right, um, are gonna have, are gonna be a little gripping in the bottom. And they're gonna have a small padding inside. You can't really see this on the video, guys, but it's a small padding. Bike shorts have a thick pad. You do not ever, ever, ever want to do your swim in bike shorts and then jump on the bike because it will feel like a diaper and you will chafe. So tri shorts have this very, very thin padding. Hey, Stella, how are you? You're the first comment I see. If others, if you've been commenting, I haven't seen them yet. You're the first one. So. So you just want to wear a pair of tri shorts, and then you want to wear a tri top. Tri top typically has no sleeves, has a zipper in front, but where it comes in handy, and you don't really need this for sprint, is the pockets in the back. Okay, has pockets in the back for you to for you to put food and I don't know stuff to change your flat tire, whatever you need in there. Again, that's that's optional. You don't really need that, especially for a sprint triathlon. Okay, so those are your those are upgrades. What you also need is a swim cap, which in most cases, a swim cap will be provided for you by the race. Okay. Hey, Susie. Hey, Lisa. You guys, thanks for hopping on. Hey, um, how old is this cap, you guys? Steelhead. When did I do steelhead last? Anyway, um, typically a race will provide a cap, but I always bring an extra anyway because there are races, yes, you guys, that run out of caps. The key to that is you want to wear something bright. Don't be showing up with no dark purple or black cap because part of the reason for a swim cap is to make you visible in that water. Hey, Jackie. Jackie, girl. Haven't seen you in a long time. And you need a pair of goggles. 
and somebody just asked me today, oh, I forgot to write it down. She just asked me today, do I need special goggles for outside, yada, yada, and um, the answer is no. I mean, you can have them, but I always had the same goggles that I swam with in the pool, outside. Now, I did have a couple of different pair of goggles. That's not because the, the goggles aren't transferable from inside to outside, but um, you could have an overcast day, you could have a very, very bright, shiny day, and you might want different goggles. Like th this pair of goggles right now, not very good for me personally in a pool because they're so dark. These are good for sun, not direct sun, but bright conditions. And then if it's overcast conditions, they actually have lenses that are, um, amp they call them amber, they're like orangish, to brighten up. So if it's like really, really cloudy and it's foggy maybe, it's tough to see, you wear these amber colored lenses or orangish, and it brightens up your whole scene. Our goggles are cheap investment, you guys. I'd always carry two pair of goggles to any race anyway, just in case the strap on one of them breaks as you go up to the starting line, which, see, that just happened. I just broke this pair. All right. That's it. Suit, cap, goggles. That's all you really need. I'm done. I'm kidding. Hey, I wanted to, um, I'm going to do some giveaways. So stay tuned. I'm not going to go into it yet. It's not going to be right now, but I'm going to give some giveaways. So stay to the end. I'm almost done anyway. So that was, that was, that's what you need. The bike. You have to have a helmet. This is, goes on to more of equipment that you need. You have to have a helmet. And you guys, again, I'm doing this for all you newbies out there who've never done this before. I remember going in, I got a bike and I got the most entry level bike you could possibly get. And then I told the guy, I'm like, well, what, what else do I need? And I bought a pump and I bought a helmet. And I only bought the helmet because it matched the bike. <laughs> um, so if you go into your garage, don't be pulling out your kid's, you know, 10-year-old helmet. Helmets generally are only good for like five years. There's a sticker inside. So I brought my helmet. There's a sticker inside. It's hard to see in this one. But if I lift up this little Velcro piece, can you see the yellow sticker in there, you guys? You can see it. Now you can see it. On that sticker, and every helmet has to come with this. If it doesn't have this, get a different helmet. It's CPSI, Consumer Protection Safety Institute, I think. It'll have a date on there, how, when the helmet's good for. Okay, this one says, haha, <laughs> this one says October of 2010. How old is this helmet now? <laughs> so this helmet's really technically not even safe to wear. The other thing is if you do crash even one time in your helmet, throw it out, get a new one. It did its job. Don't risk, don't risk hurting yourself over the inexpensive object as a helmet. Okay, shoes. For your first one and for my, I think my first three, I just wore running shoes and I put them on my bike and pedals with cages, but you may want to get cycling shoes. If you do, Try to remember to get, Jackie, I left my gog on my bike box and opened it and it smells like mildewing. Can I bleach them? I would not bleach your goggles. No, 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 no. Because if there's anything lingering on that, Jackie, and it gets into your eye, you are going to burn your eyeballs. So no, rinse them in like maybe warm soapy water, but not bleach. Um, air it out. It'll air out. If you guys go and get bike shoes, get tri shoes and not bike shoes. Okay, so this is a tri shoe, and let me t tell you the difference. Well, if you don't know, and I don't mean to overwhelm you, and I wish some newbies would jump in here, but th they have, you put, you buy the shoe, and it has holes for you to screw in the cleat. This is the cleat part, okay? And then the cleats and the pedals, which is what goes in here, those come together. So typically, any shoe is universally good for any cleat. What you want to do is first, buy the shoes that fit good for you, good to you. Look for shoes, try shoe, one Velcro strap. That's it, because that's fast in transition. Cycling shoes will have three straps, they'll have a little twisty thing that like you turn and that's how you tighten the shoes. In transition, ain't nobody got time for that. So you wanna get a shoe with one quick strap, okay? Once you find the shoe you like, go find pedals that you like. When you buy the pedals, Cleats come with your pedals, and you put them on. Your bike shop, put them on, whatever. Hey, Jason, how are you, dude? Uh, Yolanda, hi, Jim. 
Thank you guys for hopping in. So now we're on the bike shoes. Again, now we're into the optional stuff already. So make sure you get shoes with just one strap. The shirt and the shorts, like I mentioned in the, in the top, they don't have to be fancy pants. You can put on a cotton t-shirt and a pair of just whatever shorts you've been running in. That's what I did my first try, first, first, first year of tries. That's what I did my first year of tries in, and it's okay, and I did fine. You can upgrade later to the things that we talked about. The tri top, right? Whoops, tri top, which has no sleeves, zipper in front, pockets in the back. If you're just doing a sprint, guys, you're not gonna need those pockets anyway, so. Don't invest so you make sure you want to stay in the sport. And then shorts, try shorts, not bike shorts, that have a thin padding, not a real thick diaper-like diaper padding. Hi, Katie. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. I, uh, uh, it's good to see you. Hey, Pam. I just met Pam at Running for Kicks yesterday. Okay, thanks for hopping in. All right, so that's it. Helmet, shoes, bike shorts. Run and then you're running that so if you're just gonna put on whatever you put on First of all ideally guys when you get serious if you get serious about the sport You don't want to be doing any war wardrobe changes in During the race just put put your the tri top the tri shorts on Swim bike run all on the same thing. The only thing you ever do is change your uh, take the wetsuit off But if you're new and you're not sure you're gonna stick with this put put a shirt on put the shorts on Biking it running it pretty simple all right, now we're gonna go into the optional stuff and this is where the fun happens, okay? A hat, didn't bring a hat, but especially, girl, look, I got my bangs back, I got my bangs back. So I would always put a hat on because I want that stuff out of my face. It also keeps the sun out of my eyes, also keeps the sweat from dripping down. So I'd, I like a visor, personal preference. Visor's also easier when you have a big old ponytail. So guys, again, easier for you maybe to wear a hat. Sunglasses. Sunglasses are, they're not required on a bike, guys, but I would highly recommend them just for any bugs or twigs that may kind of fly towards your eyes, rocks, whatever. Uh, I would recommend them. You don't have to have them. And you don't have to get, you know, $100 pair of sunglasses. Get, get what you like. You, wear what you've been wearing. It doesn't really matter. This race is for you. It's not a fashion show. Otherwise, we wouldn't be wearing spandex. Um... Where am I at? Towel. A brightly colored towel. I didn't bring one of those up either, but we'll, this, this will play into another episode, another live video that I'll do on transitions. You want to wear, when you want to bring a brightly colored towel so that um, you can be, you can easily find your stuff in transition. Again, I'll, I'll cover that in another video, but the towel is not for you to stand there and dry your hair, wipe up. No, you don't, you don't need to do that. You're going to dry off when you get on the bike anyway. <laughs> but um, you do want to have a towel to put, kind of put your stuff on. Hey, Lara. Hey, Jennifer. Um, hey, Nora. Water bottle. Again, for sprint, guys, I might not even take a drink in a sprint. It's kind of over before you blink, and they usually have aid stations on the run. Um, but it's nice to have a water bottle on your bike should you get thirsty that you have something. I would recommend you practice drinking out of said water bottle while you ride. I have a friend, and I know she's not on here, um, who for years I trained with her, and then one day I did a ride with her, and we get halfway through the bike ride, and I'm like, you haven't even touched your water. Are you not thirsty? She goes, oh, I can't drink and ride. I can't steer. I'm like, well, then maybe we should practice that, and we did. But don't just put the water bottle there full of water for show. <laughs> you, need to be, you need to be able to ride and practice when you practice, take the water bottle out, take a drink, and practice putting it back in, all without looking down at that water bottle. You never want to take your eyes off the road. All right, again, another video. You always have a towel. Yeah, you have a towel, Jackie, but I don't think you stand there and dry yourself off with it. You might wipe your feet on it, right? I just used it to find myself. Okay, and then um, bike shoes. We covered bike shoes. One thing, and this is, I didn't put this on here because I ran out of room. Need a bigger board. Speed laces. <coughs> so speed laces, you guys, are just really elastic laces that go into the shoes so that you don't have to tie them. You just slip your foot in and transition. And my match, I always make my match. It doesn't really matter. These, these are Yanks, Y-A-N-K-Z, but you can use whatever brand you want. The key is to not, that you don't have to stop 
put on your running shoes and tie them in transition. $10 investment, save you time. Because you know, you think, oh, well, tying my shoes, MJ, is not, not really that big of a deal. Well, no, because you're just sitting here right now and you're doing nothing. But when you're in a race situation and you got out of the water and you just got off the bike and you're standing because there's really nowhere to sit, don't sit down in transition. You when you go to tie your shoes, you're breathing heavy, you're sweating all over your shoes and it's hard to keep balance, at least it was for me. So, so to put laces in, saves you time, be faster, make it easier. Half water bottle for a sprint, save the weight. Agre yes, Jason, see these guys are new though. So I don't care about that weight yet, but you are absolutely 100% right. In fact, for you, I wouldn't even go water bottle. I take my water bottle off. I take my cage off. I take as much off as I could to save the weight for you. Um, hey, Caitlin, I'm almost done, but I wanted to get to the giveaway. This is my first video in, again, almost a year. It's kind of exciting to be back. Um, and I hope that more of you come back. I plan on doing them on 6 p.m. on Central Time on Sundays unless I take another poll in this group and more people can make a different time. But the last thing that I didn't fit on here was a race belt. In a race belt, you got an, an, you guys, another $10 saves you time. So in a triathlon, you have, they give you what's called a bib, okay? And you don't have to wear it in the swim because they, they body mark you. But you, a lot of times you don't have to wear it on the bike, but you have to wear it on the run. You don't have time to pin your number on in transition. So you could pin it on the shirt before the race. I think that's what I did in my first one. So get out of the swim, have the number pinned onto my shirt already, safety pins that they give you, and then put the shirt on. But as you know, when you're wet, sometimes you can get caught up in the clothes as you're putting the shirt on. So a race belt's always a great idea, especially as you get longer. Plus, you don't have to wear this number on the bike because a lot of times it'll start when you're riding it's very annoying <laughs> so it's just a belt with two snaps to put your number on and as my giveaway y'all i'm gonna give away a couple of race belts courtesy of try rights yay okay so they clasp here right i almost chopped my finger off this morning you guys they, they clasp here, go around, go around your waist, and then you put your number here and the two snaps, the two snaps. Can you see that? One, two. So how, how do you enter to win your race belt? All you got to do, you guys, is make, give me a question for next week so that I can give you a video on a topic that you guys are interested in next week. That's it. Anyone here doing Muncie? Oh, that was the bib I just had. You've been on the receiving end of stripping the bike advice. Oh, I'm trying to get uh, for a sprint. Jim, I know what that story says because I gave you that advice. Um, but cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna give away a couple of these. All you have to do is post me a question so I can use for the video next week. And that's pretty much it, you guys. If I've missed your comment or question, it's because I can't see them all. Um, I will get to, if you've asked me a question and I didn't read, read it here to you tonight and answer it, I will answer it. I just can't see them all on the screen. I will be back next week. Um, I also wanted to say, I am running a program and you guys have probably seen the post in this group on um, Rock Your Triathlon. And this is an online course, you guys, where I help you build your own course and it's good for a lifetime. So if you sign up by April 15th, it's only $197 and you can go through the course as many times over and over and over and build your own plan. So it's kind of, it's better than uh, getting a plan online that you probably can't follow and it's not going to be tailored to your strengths and weaknesses, but it's not the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I do all the time. It's kind of in between, but again, it's lifetime and every session, every year, I'm going to add new content, new videos ebooks, whatever, and you have access to it for a lifetime. So if you're interested, I can put the link in here in the comments. Um, you can ask me any questions about it. It's new. It's going to be great. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, it's something I wish would have been around when I started the sport and didn't really have money for a coach. So how do you buy a wetsuit? Pam, great question. I'm going to get to you, get that it, to you in another video. Muncie, awesome. Me too, Nora. What is the best bike computer? Oh, Justin. I believe in there is no one best. I think something's different. The best thing is different for everybody, but that is an awesome question. 
And honestly, for when you if you're just getting started, all you really need is speed, cadence, and distance. It's real. Oh yeah, speed, cadence. That's all you really need. Ideally, you want a power meter, but those are not cheap. Um, but that's what really changes the game. But if you're a newbie, don't even think about that yet. How do you get faster on the bike? Jackie! Jackie! I can't answer that question in a, like, 20-minute live video. <laughs> you got to ride, girl, and you have to. That's what this plan is going to do, though, is if biking is your weakness, right? And so I'm guessing that that's what you're thinking that it is. We're, I'm going to talk to you about what kind of workouts you need to add so that you can improve that bike. And I talk about all of that stuff in that program. So, oh, all right, you guys, thank you again so much for hopping in. This is exciting. Please, I would say, please share this video with your friends, but I don't think you can share it because this group is closed. It's not private. It's closed. So what I recommend you do is invite your friends to join this group. It's a free group for anybody. Um, but I, I made it closed because I didn't want the spammers to get in. I had a few spammers I had to kick out earlier when I first started this group trying to sell us their stuff. So I'm, I changed it to close. I put a few questions in there, triathlon related, invite all your friends. This is a great resource for you guys. I want you to be able to talk to each other, answer questions, get information that, that you need, meet each other before you go to the races, just like kind of what's happening now. Um, and that's, you know, my whole point of, of this group. So anyway, thank you guys again so much for hopping in. I'll, uh, put this replay. I think, I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's all new, but it's going to be up here so you can rewatch it again. If you have further questions, don't hesitate to ask if you don't, if you put a question and I didn't answer it, it's not cause I'm ignoring you. I didn't see it. I'll get to it. And again, if you want to win one of these super cool try right race belts, I'm going to give away, I think three of them. Just ask me some questions on this page so that I can use them for future videos and I'll do a raffle and the best questions are going to get a race belt. I'll just mail them to you. So thank you guys so much for hopping in. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you here next Sunday, uh, 6 p.m. Central Time Live. All right. Take care.